Okay. <laughs> I guess it's going. <clears throat> um, I'm going to read a couple Bible verses here. Uh, Proverbs 29 2 says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. You think about what's going on today. Look at these people that call themselves leaders. Where are they leading you to, man? They ain't leading me nowhere, I'll tell you that. There's a lot of sad people in this world. They're mourning. Next verse is Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then Will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land? I wrote these down on a piece of dry wall. I didn't bring my little Bible with me because it's raining. It's just me and Buddy. Debbie stayed back at the new place. Yeah, I'm gonna speak as an American. This is this applies to every country in the world. But I'm gonna speak as an American because I was born in America. I'm 54 years old, and I've seen things go downhill all my life. It, it's you know the corruption in in government is it's beyond belief I mean government's always been corrupt probably every government has always been corrupt but this this government we have in America it's just it's not even it's beyond corrupted it's it's perverted. These people that you call leaders that you go out <laughs> seems like every other day now there's an election. But you go out and you vote for them. I mean, and I'm talking from you know city councilmen right up to the the POTUS himself. you don't get in these positions unless you're not just corrupted and compromised, but you're just downright perverted. Can you imagine if our so-called leaders in this country were righteous? 
What's righteous mean anyway? Righteousness basically means doing the right thing over and over and over. You do the right thing. I've always said that if everybody just followed the Ten Commandments, you can find them in Exodus chapter 20. If everybody just followed the Ten Commandments, there would be peace on earth. Think about that. There wouldn't be no lying, no stealing. Children would obey their parents. People wouldn't be coveting other people's stuff. Huh. And we'd all love our Creator. These leaders are corrupted, man. They're corrupted and perverted and they're wicked. And so now you got people mourning. You got people on drugs. I don't know if y'all look at Debbie's channel or not. You know, you ought to check her channel out. She's been giving little updates here and there. We recently uh, <laughs> moved into a meth house. Well, it was a meth house. We didn't move into a meth house so we could do meth. We don't. I don't even. I don't even know what freaking meth is. But you know, bless his heart, the guy that owns it, he's gonna he's gonna let us live there free for a while, while we clean the place up. And, make some repairs and whatnot. Well, we just moved into it on the 16th. We got it. We got one big room cleaned out. And we moved our bed over a bunch of stuff. <clears throat> I might make a video on all that later on, but the place, it wasn't dirty. It was filthy. I mean, these poor people sitting around doing meth, and you know, I would, there's a lot of empty booze bottles laying around. I mean, booze bottles and and, and beer bottles, and, and 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 there was children there. It's infested with cockroaches. That's an ongoing battle. It's filth. I spent an entire day just cleaning cockroach poop out of the freaking kitchen cabinets, man. And they had children living there. And I guess the woman, the mother of the children, she had them taken off of her. It's, it, you know, this is just one house in northern Alabama. This is going on all over America. Every little small town has problems like this. We've had the cops come up there wanting to know what we're doing there, where Mary is, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, we don't know Mary. That's the woman's name. Heard a lot about her, but never met her. I pray for her. I pray for her children. 
Because you might say, well, she had her children taken off of her. That's a good thing. Well, maybe, maybe not. Because a lot of these children, <laughs> they get taken off their parents. They ended up being trafficked. That's a thing. That's a reality in this country, man. And why? Because leaders are wicked. And hence, the people have become wicked. I've heard it said the fish rots from the head down. See, we, we've had generations of children being taught that there is no God, being taught that the Bible isn't true, being taught that, hey, if it feels good, do it. You do as thou wilt. Shall be the whole of the law. Isn't that a Aleister Crowley's thing there? To claim to be the most evil man. Isn't that a tenet of Satanism? Do as thou wilt. Shall be the whole law. Well, that's what we got now. We got people just doing whatever the hell they want to do. Consequences be damned. And now they're teaching sodomy in your public school. It breaks my heart. If you ain't heartbroken over thinking, you know, if you're an American and you're not heartbroken over thinking what your country has become, you got a hard heart. I don't want a hard heart. I've been down that road. I've had a hard heart. I pray every day. Lord, please soften my heart. So you think you're going to vote your way out of this? I remember when I was a child, they said, well, Mark, you could be the president of the United States when you grow up. <laughs> this is the land of opportunity and freedom. All you got to do is work hard. Get a good education. The people that told me that meant well, they because they were deceived themselves. They didn't understand that this is Satan's kingdom. Satan runs this world. When Jesus was being tempted, and the, and the, uh, the devil said, "Well, hey, if you just bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world." Jesus didn't deny that those weren't his kingdoms. He said, worship God. He's the only one you should worship. Paraphrase. But he never once denied that those were, their, those were his kingdoms. They are his kingdoms because he won them in the Garden of Eden. You ain't going to vote your way out of this. You know, Donald Trump ain't going to save you. I'm sorry to tell you. Joe Biden ain't going to save you. Save you. Uh, what's his name? That little dude down in Florida. Uh, what's his name? Ron DeSantis. He ain't going to save you. You don't get to be a governor of a state without being corrupted. You don't get to be you don't get to run for president without being compromised. You don't, you know. I mean, come on, let's grow up. Let's figure this out. 
You ain't going to vote your way out of this. This is a spiritual problem. And you're not going to uh, solve a spiritual problem with politics. You just ain't going to do it. It don't happen. So the second verse I read, Second Chronicles 7, 14, that's the answer. That's the answer. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. You know, you got to have some humility, man. You got to admit, hey, I'm wrong. You got to humble yourself before your creator, before the almighty living God. Say, hey, Lord, I'm a sinful man. And then, what's it say? And pray. Pray. Pray without ceasing. And seek my face. Seek your God. Seek the living God, the creator of all things. Seek him. Seek and ye shall find, right? And turn from their wicked ways. You, you, you're out there, you're doing stuff, you know, you know damn well it's wrong. You know it's wrong to lie. You know it's wrong to steal. Whatever, man, you know it's wrong. Make that choice not to do it. If you do those things, then God says, well, I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Look how sick our land is. Why is our land so sick? Well, because <laughs> the wicked are in rule. Our land is poisonous. The soil is poison. Yeah, you go... Yeah, you go to the store all you want and buy all kinds of fresh fruits and vegetables, but the, the, the damn soil has been so depleted of nutrients and poisoned with pesticides, insecticides, herbicides, all kinds of sides going into the soil, you know, from commercial farming that, you know, eating an apple today ain't like eating an apple 200 years ago. You don't get you don't get the same nutritional value out of it. See what I'm saying? They poison the air. They poison the water. They poison the land. <laughs> they poison us. And it's because generations of children have been taught that there is no God. Uh, we're uh, Bible ain't true. We're just a speck on a speck somewhere in the middle of an endless universe. We're insignificant. There's life out there a lot more evolved than we are. Blah, 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 blah. It's all lies. But our children have been taught this for generations now. They try to teach this shit in my school. I heard it all the way through college, man. So if you teach children that they ain't nothing but a damn animal, what do you expect them to grow up and be? They're going to grow up and act like animals. There's no consequences. Well, there is consequences. There's consequences for everything you do. I think life is just a series of choices. You know, you, you you can make the right choice or you can make the wrong choice, you know? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of outside influences, like especially when you're little, when you're a little kid. There's, there's circumstances way beyond your control. But I think once you become an age, once you become of age, you know, life's just a series of choices, man. Oh, well. 
this is just something that's kind of been on my heart lately. You know, protect your children. Please protect your children. They're 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 coming after the they've been they've been coming after the children. They were coming after the children when I was a child. Pull your kids out of school. These schools, I call them public hell holes because that's what they are. It was a hell hole when I was in school. I couldn't imagine going to school now. They have lockdown. They have uh, armed guards. They have uh, fences and, you know, all this crap. I didn't have that when I was in the 70s. When I was in grade school in the 70s, man, my mom walked right in that damn school. Anytime she wants, she walk right over to the classroom and say, hey, I'm picking Mark up. Remember, they used to keep the doors and windows all open because we didn't have air conditioning. So in the, in, the, in the hot days, in the fall, in the spring, you know, they'd have the all the doors wide open. You get a breeze down through the hallway. You get a breeze through the rooms. It ain't like that now, man. They, you got to be buzzed in. You got to be approved. You got to show proof of who you are, blah, blah, blah. They're prisons. They're teaching your children how to live in prison. At least when I was in school, they was teaching me how to live in an open air prison, but they're literally teaching your children how to live in a freaking prison prison, man. I had a friend, you know, her child they had something going on at the school and and they locked it down and and, and she's like, you know, I'm so glad they locked the child, they locked the school down because then I know he's safe. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? You don't know your child's safe unless he's with you. Your child ain't safe with you. And now look at, you got all these sodomite teachers teaching your children sodomy. It's in mainstream news now. Hello, it ain't it ain't a conspiracy theory, whatever the hell that even means. It's fact. There's billions and billions of dollars behind it. Behind what? Behind the agenda. Protect your children, that's all I'm saying. I love y'all. Y'all, y'all take care. Be safe, man. Because I, I think a result of all this from an immoral government and an immoral people, because that's what we've become, at least in my country. We're an immoral people. If you're letting your child go to a public school and letting him be taught sodomy, that's immoral. I'm sorry. As a result of all this immorality, I believe, personally, this country of mine, America, which started out as a Protestant country, it started out, the mantra was, no king but King Jesus. But it got fat and lazy, and now it's immoral. And because the so-called leadership is completely immoral, the people have become completely immoral. 
I believe this country is under God's judgment. So, and I don't think we're going to stop it. And you'll say, well, Mark, I got my gun. Well, I got a gun too. What's that even mean? What's the gun for? Oh, here we go about guns. Well, what's the Second Amendment for? It was, it's the Second Amendment because it was supposed to protect the First Amendment. Okay? It, it, it's, it's supposed to keep us from tyranny. If the government becomes too tyrannical, we could use our guns and go against it and stop it and keep it free. Well, guess what? The last three years, they put tyranny right in your face. Literally, they put it right in your face. They made you wear a mask. Now, I didn't see nobody uh, sporting a gun then. And they say, well, shit, they're going to wear the mask. Hey, let's give them a poisonous concoction and make it shoot it right in their arm. Just shoot it right in their arms. And if they don't do it, we'll take their job away from them. I ain't seen any guns. I've seen a lot of shots fired, but I didn't see not one gun. And you could say, well, Mark, you know, you weren't, uh, you weren't shooting nobody. Well, what good is it going to do me to go out by myself and shoot people? What, what good is it? It has to be in mass. But they got this freaking country so damn divided from everything from a football team to religion to politics to whatever. They just, the abortion, uh, you know, hey, should we kill unborn babies? You know, come on. This country's gone. This country's toast. This country is under God's judgment. And the only thing that will save it is repentance. Repentance of the people and repentance of the leadership. That's my humble opinion. But what do I know? Y'all be safe. Bye.